Hello from Media and Technologies, and welcome to our Imaging 101 series, short subject webinars on the fundamentals of imaging and clinical trials. In this session, How Do We Assess Response in an Oncology Clinical Trial? You will learn the basics of response criteria and how it is used in an oncology clinical trial to assess the efficacy of the treatment. Assessment of response in a clinical trial is a combination of biomarkers and criteria. Criteria include biomarkers as part of their definition. The first part of assessing response is a biomarker. A biomarker is a characteristic objectively measured and evaluated as an indicator of normal or pathological processes. For example, body temperature. When it's too high or too low, it is an indication that something is not normal. An imaging biomarker is a biological characteristic detectable on an image. There are two types of imaging biomarker. An imaging biomarker can be qualitative. For example, the presence of diffuse disease. Is there presence of diffuse disease? The answer is yes or no. An imaging biomarker can also be quantitative, which means that the reporting of this biomarker will be a number. For example, 5 mm or 10 mm diameter of a tumor. The second part of assessing response is the use of criteria. Response criteria are a set of rules to objectively measure tumor response or disease progression after treatment. They also involve the use of specific metrics, for example, distance plus biomarkers for the size of the lesion. Response criteria involve various types of biomarkers, including anatomical biomarkers, such as the change in tumor size and functional biomarkers such as changes in the physiology or makeup of the tumor. We find these changes using specific imaging modalities, such as PET or contrast-enhanced MRI. These modalities will give us information on glucose metabolism, hypoxia, and angiogenesis, for example. Response criteria are used to allow for uniform reporting of imaging data. They are used so that different clinical sites, centers, readers, and countries can measure and report tumors the same way by providing standardized information. The measures can then be analyzed and used uniformly to understand the efficacy of the treatment and in order to compare results across trials. Response criteria provides consistency and can help to lower the reading variability, which is inherent due to the complexity of the imaging data. It is important to keep variability as low as possible in order to obtain the best results in clinical trial. If readers are looking for the same measurements measured the same way, it helps lower this potential risk. Here is an example of criteria. It uses measurements, the largest diameter of a tumor. And it uses biomarkers, in this case, the size of the tumor. And it uses a set of rules and measures to provide a structure and limits for readers when reporting the criteria. The RESIST 1.1 standards are the only criteria validated by the FDA for regulatory approval. RESIST stands for Response Evaluation Criteria in Solid Tumors. With RESIST 1.1, baseline lesion size should be greater than 10 mm. There are also rules to follow. For example, the reader will report and follow only 5 lesions total per patient and 2 maximum per organ. These criteria classify patients in the study into different categories of treatment response, complete response, partial response, stable disease, or progressive disease. In this diagram, you can see the tumor burden, which is the sum of the lesions under study, plus new lesions, which might have appeared in the study after baseline, that equal unequivocal progression, meaning that there is no doubt that the tumors have grown from last time point. Resist criteria do have some limitations and carry subjectivity, which is a factor for interreader variability. For example, there are issues with reporting new lesions and with reporting progression of non-target lesions, which are smaller than 10 mm. These are possible factors leading to subjective assessments. Another limitation is that the criteria are based on the anatomical size of the tumor, and therefore it does not take into account tumor cavitation. That is, when there are internal changes in the tumor while the external surface stays the same. RESIST does not take this internal change into account. It also does not take into account metabolic function nor blood flow parameters. 
Here we show the evolution of quantitative imaging biomarkers and criteria over time. The first was the WHO criteria. Since 1979, the evolution of criteria is geared towards the improvement of criteria in the same organ or for a specific pathology or therapy. The latest criteria is the iResist criteria for immuno-oncology, which was published in early 2017. While it is still not validated by the FDA, it was tested by the same team that validated Resist 1.1. For certain drug classes or types of cancers, evaluating response with Resist 1.1 is not practical or meaningful. This is particularly true for some modern drug targets, such as immunotherapies, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, and angiogenesis blockers, that tend to stabilize disease but not cause tumor shrinkage, as well as for tumors that do not grow in easily measurable spheres or their invasive natures make identification of tumor margins difficult. This list shows the various other criteria that are available depending on the type of drug being tested or the type of cancer. For example, I resist for immunotherapies, Raynal for glioma, and IWG Chesson for lymphoma. Different response criteria use different metrics and measuring techniques. Bidimensional measure two metrics, the longest diameter and the longest perpendicular diameter. This technique has advantages and disadvantages. The biggest disadvantage is reader variability when compared to unidimensional measures. Unidimensional metric measures the longest diameter. This is the most commonly used since Resist 1.1 is supported by this technique. Region of interest is based on the Hounsfield units from CT scans and gives information regarding the density of the tumor and is used for the CHOI criteria. The final technique is unidimensional, avoiding areas of necrosis, and is used in M-Resist. You can see the tumor has two parts, necrotic, which is dark, and viable, which is light. M-Resist only takes into account the viable part of the tumor. It is generally used for liver measures. Reader variability can be an important factor here as well. This concludes our quick tour of how to assess response in an oncology clinical trial. We hope you were able to learn more about response criteria and how it is used. Thank you for joining us for this Imaging 101 class. If you would like to learn more about median technologies or to watch the rest of our Imaging 101 series, please visit www.mediantechnologies.com.